Hi, and thanks for watching this video. I'm Paul Steinbrook, co-founder of Skyway Web Design and Marketing, and I'm joined today by Mark Steinbrook, who is also co-founder of Skyway Web Design and Marketing, and he's going to share with us some insight about website design. Mark, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Paul. Well, certainly one of the most common questions that you are asked is how much does web design cost? So why don't you share some insight about that? Sure. And yes, I would agree. This is probably the uh, the most common question uh, and what is forefront on people's minds when they contact uh, me and other web developers trying to figure out what the cost of a website is going to be. So there's quite a few aspects that go into the cost of the website, and so I'll try to go through these uh, pretty quickly for time's sake, uh, but also um, with a little bit of depth uh, just so um, people that are watching this can understand uh, the you know each of these items well. So utilizing a, um, a custom design or a build-it-yourself uh, process is going to be the first item that determines what the cost is. If uh, you're building the website yourself, which a lot of hosting companies offer some kind of um, website builder with their hosting, then uh, it's going to be a lot less expensive than whether uh, you have a company build the site for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so what we're going to talk about solely in this particular uh, video is what determines the cost if you are having someone build the site for you. Mm -hmm. So the first item is going to be whether or not they're using a consultative approach or a cookie cutter approach. Um, co uh, consultative approach is basically more of a hands-on and someone guiding you through the process, whereas a cookie cutter approach um, oftentimes means that you're not even interacting with someone in particular, um, that you're just filling out a series of online forms or communicating via um, some kind of email or help desk. Um, so that's going to be the first that impacts the cost. Um, a consultative approach would be uh, a more expensive approach than utilizing a cookie cutter approach. Mm -hmm. um, the second item is content mapping. And content mapping is something that a lot of website developers and designers um, seem to miss. And it is the process of mapping out or creating a blueprint for the website that lists all the pages and functionalities that are going to be integrated into the website before you start building the site. Um, what we use is a uh, is a spreadsheet that lists all the pages and uh, shows the functionalities for each page, um, shows the, the primary navigation menu uh, items as well as the secondary and any tertiary navigation menu items. Um, it includes what's going to be in the header, what's going to be in the footer, any kind of special notes. And this particular map or the content map, as we refer to it, is something that then, uh, once it's finalized, is shared with the development team so they know exactly what is going to be included in the website so there's no confusion or ambiguity in the site building process. Um, the third item that's going to determine the price is whether or not you're using a pre-made design or you're having a custom design uh, created for you. A custom design is going to be more expensive than using a pre-made design. Um, functionalities. Uh, what kind of functionalities are included in the website? Is it going to be a very simple website that just has content, text, and images, and maybe a contact form? Or are you integrating things like a shopping cart, um, a calendar, some kind of online event registration? Um, those kind of things are going to increase the cost of a website. How much content is the, uh, the organization putting in for you? Um, are you having just a few pages of content put in, or are you having 10, 20, 50, 100 pages of content? Um, the more content you have put in to a website, the more cost, uh, you know, the more time it's going to take, and so it's going to increase the cost. Mm -hmm. um, training. Are you getting any kind of training uh, with the website once the site is done, and how is that training being performed? Um, is it via some kind of a, um, a text manual? Is it one-on-one um, -on -one training uh, by phone or by video chat, or is it some kind of an online video tutorials where you can go back and watch the videos again and again and share them with a web team? Um, that's going to impact the, um, the cost as well. Um, the last two 
two items are the level of support that you're going to get after the website is built. Uh, are you able to contact the developer and how? Um, is it going to be by phone, by email, uh, in person? Um, that will impact the cost. And then lastly, are they including hosting? Are they including your domain name? Are they including email? Those all will also impact the cost in the, uh, the cost of a website. All right, great. So with all of those um, different factors playing a role in the cost, somebody calls you up at Skyway Web Design and Marketing and asks for, you know, ask the price of a website. What's the kind of range that somebody could expect? Well, the range, I guess the the range could be anywhere as inexpensive as uh, $1,500, um, but can go up to Ten thousand um, dollars. I would say that most uh, websites are usually somewhere in a twenty-five hundred to four thousand dollar price point, um, mm-hmm. and those are uh, that that cost is typically spread out over the course of a few months, uh, and then the uh, the ongoing costs of uh, hosting and support um, would be you know in addition to that. But usually, websites are some somewhere in between that twenty-five hundred and four thousand dollar price point. Okay, great. Thanks for the insight, Mark. You're welcome. And thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned uh, for more videos from Mark about uh, website design questions.